This movie was the largest opening for a video game movie ever, from what I read. 70 million four day, about 60 million three yeah. day. So really nice numbers. And so the question is, why is that? Why did this movie make so much? And I think it's guys my age taking their kids to go see it. And so <laughs> like I, I, I went to go see it wrong, and yeah. everyone there, it was a 10 year old kid, an eight year old kid or two yeah. kids. And they're dressed up in their Sonic um, pajamas, their Sonic costume. And like my kids were running around the theater after it ended, like I don't actually, I was about to say what happens in the, the post credit scene, but they're so excited screaming about <laughs> what they saw in the post credit yeah. scene, stuff like that. Then the next day I went to go see fantasy Island, not recommended, oh, uh, so, <laughs> try to torture oh, myself. No. And God. I walk out of the theater at this exact same time, the theater across the hallway, Sonic let out. And it was a bunch of 40 year old dudes with their 10 year old kid walking out of it. That's just absolutely amped. And I think that's, they knew that that's what the target audience was. They were trying to make a movie that would appeal to a kid. My kids loved it. Every kid I've heard from loved it. And that wouldn't drive guys my age crazy. And so that's what it like. It perfectly does that. But I can see if you're in like your mid twenties and you're like, you played Sonic games growing up too. So you have that nostalgia for Sonic, but you're not the, you're not the target audience. You're too old yeah. and you're too young to, to be the right. perfect target audience for it. I think, Perhaps that's even a little bit of Griffin why you didn't like it well, as much. But yeah, perhaps. that's my theory. I, I, I think like oh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. But I guess to throw that back to you, why do you guys think it did so well? And what do you think about that? Um, I, yeah. I think from for me, it's like like yeah, I, I guess it's geared towards a younger demographic, and I, I understand why it succeeded, because I think you're right. It's there's no kids' films out right now, and so people are going to like yeah. take their kids to go see Sonic, naturally, it's probably why it's why the Lego Movie did so. I believe the Lego Movie Two did yeah. fairly well last year, or some something like that. Whenever that came out last, um, my my kind of weird like grapple with this is like it's it has to please like the Sonic fans who are like my age and probably well over my age, and then like is trying to appeal to kids who I, I guess haven't really grown up with Sonic, and so it's like trying to do two things, and it's like who do you target to for your your demographic, and so like I get that's a really difficult thing to do. It just like to me, it was just like Deadpool for kids, and I'm kind of sick of the Deadpool <laughs> shtick a little bit. Yeah, I get um, you. But that being said, I'm I am a little surprised it's as successful as it is because. When we have these movies come out, um, obviously the fan base is like, we're going to go see this. But like the fan base legitimately went to go mm -hmm. see this on top of like yeah. it being a more accessible to wider audiences, which is why I think movies like Tomb Raider, uh, Warcraft and, and Assassin's Creed did not make as much money is because it limited their demographic. When you can appease kids like you can, you know, you'll you'll make the money back. Families can go see it, yeah. and and I'm I'm a little confused as to why this is doing better than Detective Pikachu because I think I Detective Pikachu, that. like it's a on top of it being a far better film, it's Pokemon, and that's like a yeah, a, it's it's a much bigger property than Sonic. So like I I'm not quite sure what the case is there. Maybe it's because it's a less crowded market, which is what I'm gonna lean towards, but. It is really an interesting sort of situation we're seeing here. I wonder if some of that yeah. is even that 40-year-old demographic. Like, I'm too old for Pokemon. Like, I took my kids because they were <laughs> excited for it. I have to review the movies, too. But, like, I have no nostalgia for Pokemon because I, I just missed it. And my age yeah. now have the kids that are can be Sonic. And we did grow up Sega Genesis. That And it was, like, huge that battle between mario and sonic in the early 90s chris what do you think about what why is it that yeah. it did so well so my argument is we got to definitely mention you know the whole campaign or what happened with the whole redesign and i'm not saying the fan base went out just to support the redesign because we know there was a lot of people complaining that we're never going to buy tickets to see this movie either way but just that marketing push and how many eyeballs got to be like oh there's actually a sonic movie and there's a controversy going on so one it got spread out widely just from that and two why i think detective pikachu just didn't get the love that sonic is getting as one that name detective pikachu like if you come out with a pokemon movie i think it would have been so it would have made so much more money if it was called pokemon the movie or the live action movie whatever because you hear that title detective pikachu and it's an obscure video game in the pokemon world it yeah. was a video game made for the ds so having that out there even like you said uh sean you're not the demographic but i bet if it was called pokemon and it had ash and all 
them, you probably would have been more inclined because that's a familiar side of Pokemon that you knew. Detective Pikachu, I bet you were like, what, that, <laughs> yeah. Pikachu's a detective now? Yeah. What does when, that when mean? I heard the, when they announced it two, three years back or whatever, I was like, what? <laughs> what are they doing? Exactly. Reynolds, what is happening? <laughs> So Sonic was just simple enough where it's Sonic the Hedgehog the movie, you know the blue guy, a mass appeal, then this outrageous marketing campaign that happened. I think just all the right cards were in place where this turned into a perfect disaster that ended up making it successful. Now, the second Detective Pikachu movie, which I don't even know if it got confirmed or not, I think is definitely going to make more money than this Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Uh, Griffin, do you think that? Um, depends on when it's released. I listen. I get your point yeah. with the Detective Pikachu, but it's still Pokemon, and I don't think oh, yeah. you could you could name that film like Bulbasaur, the Revenge of Bulbasaur, or whatever, and like <laughs> I, it would probably do just as well because it's the Pokemon brand. Like people are going to see that mm-hmm. film because it's because it's Pokemon, and they love that sort of thing. Um, <coughs> I I I really do think Sonic is is more successful. The more I've kind of like thought about it, it is more successful because of where it's released. I mean, they dumped it in okay. in February, February on Valentine's Day yeah. weekend. Nothing around it that is poss- could possibly compete with it. Um and so I think had Detective Pikachu been in a similar situation, you would have seen that film do a lot better cuz that that movie was sandwiched yeah. between Endgame, between Godzilla, between Aladdin. Yeah, that so was a was busy like, month. True. Yeah. That's so true. it's um yeah, I'm not entirely sure if okay. that I like I, I think that's the case, but like the only other way to test it is it is to drop you know the Detective yeah, Pikachu sequel in an empty month. In February. So, <laughs> one yeah, one rumor circulating is that the whole bad original design was part of a conspiracy 4D chess to trick the public and to get people talking about that. it. Um, you guys buy into that one? No, I think if if I'm a marketing person, if I work for Paramount and my two options were I messed up and I ruined the marketing campaign or I can take credit for this conspiracy online, I'm going to take the credit for the conspiracy online to look like I was a genius the entire time. I, I don't think you can plan this out. Right. Well, here's the other thing. One of one of the the VFX branches based in Vancouver that worked on the Sonic and did the redesign, they had to shut down because they were overworked and they yeah. you know, they basically ran that division into the ground because of this because of the poor creative choices that the higher-ups made on this film. So I I have I do not think they would have done that um as just a marketing stint, you know? Yeah, it's just yeah. we get real into the tinfoil hat zone of like yeah. you you can't <laughs> orchestrate this kind of thing because it can go so bad so fast when you're actively trying to get bad uh will from the people so that you can win it back and by taught like no that's not what you want to do 